Today on the Tech Bytes podcast, sponsored by Fortinet, we talk about IoT and OT risks and how to mitigate them. One option from Fortinet is Fortilink NAC. This is a free feature that can help you segment and protect IoT and OT devices and can even help you deploy virtual patches. Another option is Fortinac, a full bore NAC solution. We'll get into the differences between the two offerings, how they work, and how to decide which one is a better fit for your network. Our guests from Fortinet are Chris Hins, Senior Director of Product and Solutions, Secure Connectivity, and James Allen, Senior Director of Product Marketing and Solutions, LAN Access, and Zero Trust. Uh, James and Chris, thanks for being here. Uh, so first off, IT and OT networks have lived in separate worlds for ages. Why is it that IoT, that OT systems like industrial controls and sensors and other things are now starting to fall under IT's remit? Yeah, that's a great question. We've seen a trend over the last several years where IT teams are being asked to um, begin to take over some of the um, OT-based networks uh, administration, specifically because whereas OT networks previously were air-gapped, meaning they had no access to the internet or to, to other networks, now we're seeing them uh, enabling access for the purposes of, of management, uh, proactive maintenance, uh, vendors coming in and being able to maintain their equipment. And so now these OT systems need to fall under security uh, policies that that they may not have previously fallen under. Yeah, I almost feel like it's a chunk of the network that before everyone had been content to just leave, leave be on its own. Yeah. Now there's an expectation that it needs to be beholden to what IT is doing throughout the rest of the company. And my understanding is OT devices, particularly on the industrial side, uh, I'm not thinking about like printers or something, are just, they present a different risk. So what might IT not be familiar with in terms of the risk profile of these devices? Yeah, they're, they're very, they're dealing with very sensitive environments, as you can imagine. I mean, manufacturing floors, um, but then they're also dealing with you know, the things that affect our day-to-day -day lives, water treatment plants, other areas where, you know, something going wrong in those environments can have a, a, a very negative effect. So when you look at the need to protect these environments while still enabling them to perform at the best of their capability, looking at the network and providing appropriate segmentation and 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 looking at these devices and their and their uh, patch levels is key. A lot of these OT systems, they're running older code. Mm. They obviously can't be taken offline to be patched. So it's a very big challenge for a lot of these administrators to to tackle. Yeah, James, I think you know you what you touched on there, the idea of being always on. You know, the, this these OT systems can never have downtime or, or when they do, it is highly planned, highly scheduled, and it's only happening once every, you know, long length of time. It really means that patching or updating code is something that oftentimes is really avoided when at all possible. Certainly, you know, we as Fortinet, we always encourage people to ensure that you have the latest patches. We want to ensure everybody is fully secure, but we do understand that that can make a real challenge for OT systems where they cannot afford for things to be down any longer than a small service window. In my understanding is a lot of these devices, you can't, you know, put an agent on, so you can't run a local firewall or anti-malware or anything. That's you, correct. you just need to leave these devices alone, essentially. Yeah, that's correct. And we see that not only in OT environments, we see that often in IoT environments as well, where it's very challenging to put um, some type of, of, of uh, code or, or sensor on a IoT or OT device. So let's dive in then. Forty Link NAC. Um, what is it, and what present what protection is it providing for the the IoT and OT realm? Yeah, Fortinet Link NAC is a feature within our secure LAN solution um, at Fortinet. It is specifically for Fortinet equipment, so our switches and our APs that are managed through Forty OS. And what we're able to do, we we know that. You know, network administrators, whether they be administrating an OT network or a small or medium business or, or a distributed enterprise, continue to struggle with identifying and controlling devices, identifying and controlling devices on their network. And so this feature was developed with Fortinet being a very much security focused company to enable them to be able to deploy NAC, whereas it had been in the challenge before 
because of the use of DOB1X and architectural challenges, this free feature um, basically enables you to, with a few clicks of a button, identify the devices that are coming onto the network and mm -hmm. automate the onboarding of those devices into secure policies. So not just segmentation, you know, not just putting them into a separate VLAN, but also being able to even micro segment and implement layer seven policies all the way down to the port level and the WLAN level. And, you know, James, it also allows us to extend some of those great FortiGuard services, such as our IoT recognition, as well as OT services, to help keep the latest device updates in mind and therefore leverage those in the recognitions and some of the rules that can be implemented in FortiLink NAC. And just to be clear, this is a feature that's available if I'm using Fortinet switches and Fortinet APs in my network. That's exactly it. So if you're using Forta switches and Forta APs that are managed through Forti OS, this feature is free to you. It's not licensed um, and it's available out of the box. The profiling functionality is based in Forti OS and the control is enabled by that management of Forti OS of our switches and APs, extending that layer seven control all the way down to the switch port in WLAN. Now, for environments that don't have um, our Forta switches or our Forta APs, we actually do offer a product called Forta NAC, which enables you to have the same level of control, similar to what you would see with some competitors out in the marketplace uh, for multi-vendor environments. Okay, yeah, we'll get into Forta NAC in a minute, but let's stick with Forta Link NAC for now. So again, it's a free feature with, uh, if I'm using Fortinet APs and switches. Uh, when I think of NAC, I think of 802.1x, as you mentioned, I think of supplicants, but as you mentioned, you don't need that with Forta Link NAC. No, no, you're leveraging the same functions that uh, drive our overall secure LAN uh, solution, which is 40 OS managing and controlling our switches and APs. And with that, because we have that layer seven visibility, um, we're able to profile devices and automate the uh, onboarding and control into secure policies. And when you say um, identifying the devices, how are you able to do that? So we're able to profile within 40 OS. So 40 OS is a layer seven capable firewall. So we're looking at you know, everything from, you know, the device coming at, say the link light comes in, we're looking at the MAC address of the device. Mm -hmm. We're looking at what traffic is attempting to pass. We're looking at even things like its DHCP uh, request, mm -hmm. and we're determining what that device is based on that. We also, additionally, for for the carpeted space, um, there all those profiles are big, built in. When you start to move into OT, because there's such a, a plethora of devices out there, um, we actually have a service as part of our FortiGuard OT service that enables you to identify even more devices specific to an, an OT environment. But basically, it's profiling that is part of uh, the FortiGate uh, that enables small and medium businesses and distributed enterprise to uh, um, enable this technology in the carpeted space. So I mentioned virtual patching in my intro. What What is virtual patching and, and how is it applied to my use of FortiLink NAC? Virtual patching is a is a very interesting feature that we're able to offer in conjunction with, with FortiLink NAC. Um, the feature is actually part of uh, uh, FortiOS and our FortiGuard services. What we're able to do is because we're actually seeing the device and the traffic is passing, we're also able to, to scan it for vulnerabilities as well. So we're able to determine if a device actually has a vulnerability to a known uh, uh, vulnerability. As you know, uh, Fortinet is a, a leading security vendor. And so we keep track of you know, a variety of different uh, uh, vulnerabilities and we track them with CVEs, commonly mm -hmm industry that gives us an ability to, to know the kill chain for a particular vulnerability. So when we detected a vulnerability on a device, what we're able to do is to develop a patch that will address that specific vulnerability. Now, what Fortilink NAC does for us is it enables us to implement that patch all the way down at the port level or on the WLAN level. So we're able to implement that patch 
closer to where the device is. And we're able to set those policies up to where they can e not just segment them, you know, with this particular policy, but we can go so far as to micro segment um, if necessary, based on the vulnerability and the vulnerability level. And one of the nice things about this is this takes dealing with a vulnerability on a piece of equipment. And you particularly you think about some of those OT environments you were mentioning earlier, mm -hmm. where taking a piece of equipment offline can be highly problematic. This changes a critical vulnerability on a piece of equipment from being a fire drill of having to deal with it and trying to wonder what you're going to do to being a planned methodology, thinking about your next service window, roll the, uh, an update into that plan for that next service window and have the downtime be a planned activity, knowing that you have virtually patched in the short term. Very, very different than a mad scramble when you find out a vulnerability and you need to make sure that you are not compromised, but don't have any other tools at your disposal in order to handle that vulnerability. Yeah, it's not as if we're saying this is a replacement for patching a device. Mm. You know, we 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 really strongly encourage as the first line of defense to patch devices. However, just as Chris said, often in OT environments, you can't take that device offline. But it's not just OT environments. We we all have been in IT for a long time. We we know there's sometimes a server sitting underneath someone's desk that hasn't been touched and can't be touched. And you know, you want to be able to implement some level of protection for that device uh, to make sure that, you know, it's not compromised. And is a virtual patch then essentially kind of like an IDS signature? Like I, I this, uh, this OT device has this potential exploit. Uh, so I'm looking for some kind of uh, uh, something in the payload of inbound traffic aimed toward that device and I'm just going to block that uh, uh, attempt to connect or what is a virtual patch? Can you get into more detail here? So it's going to depend, right? Because what we're doing is, is we're looking for a vulnerability that's already been identified, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. For example, it's a, it's a listed vulnerability. It's got a CVE. And so once we determine what those vulnerabilities are, it's going to vary what that patch looks like based on that CVE. So it mm -hmm. may be blocking of certain command and control uh, aspects, right? Mm -hmm. Certain ports. But it's going to vary based on that CVE. Each one has got an individual kill chain. And what we're looking at is what do we need to put into place to eliminate the ability for that exploit to be activated? That's okay. correct, James. It, we really will tailor the compensating controls to match how that particular vulnerability is exploited. Got it. So that's... Uh, we've been talking about 40 link NAC. Um, you've also got a, a 40 NAC offering, which is different from 40 link NAC. Can you get into how 40 NAC differs? Yeah, absolutely. 40 NAC is a, a full featured uh, NAC product, right? NAC is a very mature market. There are a number of vendors in this space. And, you know, the demands of that space, whether it be the use of DOB1X, um, the ability to be able to manage multi-vendor networks and, and so on, that need exists. And we have a lot of our customers out there who maybe they don't have a, a Fortinet end-to-end -end Fortinet network. Maybe they're thinking about going to an end-to-end -end Fortinet network, but they're not there, they're not there now. Um, we also have customers, OT customers, for whom that is just not going to be realistic. They have you know, a variety of different switch vendors and, and so on that they may be using. Mm -hmm. For that purpose, Fortinac gives them the ability to have that level of control and, and integrate them into our security fabric. So we're able to do additional functionality like virtual patching, but then the patch, rather than being implemented on the switch port or at the WLAN level, is there at the, at the firewall itself or at 40 OS level itself. And so... Porto Link NAC is a free feature that's offered just for, you know, an end-to-end -end Fortinet solution. Fortinac offers a multi-vendor, you know, option for our customers, as well as additional expanded capabilities, anomaly detection, and, and so on and so forth. Okay, so if I've got uh, vendor A switches and vendor B's APs, but I still want a NAC solution, Fortinac would integrate. Uh, Fortinac is the solution I would go to. Exactly. 
What about things like ice or clear passive? I've already got that deployed as well. Can I still use Fortinac? Typically, you're going to have one vendor that you're you're choosing to control um, those those switches and those APs. I will say, you know, for example, for for something like ICE, it's it is specific to Cisco equipment. Um, ClearPass can be can be uh, uh, used in in a variety of different environments, but there are some dot one X requirements there. Fortinac doesn't have uh, those dot one X requirements. It can use dot one X, but it can also use other uh, means to be able to control those switches and access points, making it a little bit easier to deploy than some of the other solutions out there. That integration piece, though, usually there's there's got to be just one uh, control uh, um, for your wired and wireless network. Um, the only time we've seen it be otherwise is one controls wireless and the other controls switching, but that's mm -hmm. rare. We haven't seen that very often. I don't know if you agree with that, Chris, but I haven't seen that very often. No, I usually see people kind of settle on the one that, that they're planning to use. Definitely as we kind of move, as you talked about, James, as we've seen customers maybe move upon their journey with Fortinet, uh, it is not uncommon for them to move to Fortinac um, uh, as kind of part of that move as they plan to slowly migrate products over time into the security fabric. And Fortinet, mm -hmm. as you called out, James, is a great way in the interim to tie older vendor product that you are planning to replace in, in the next two to three years into the fabric in the short term until you can have a, a full Fortinet stack. We've also seen it go the other way, where we've seen customers who have initially implemented Fortinet NAC across their enterprise, and, and then they look to or looking for some of the more uh, additional features that perhaps Fortinet uh, um, offers and have upgraded um, from Fortinet NAC to Fortinet. Um, perhaps you know they've they've become larger or they've integrated um, another company or something along those lines. But we have seen that transition as well, where people go from the feature to the product, uh, um, depending on what their needs are. And just to clarify, one last point: the virtual patching I can get with Fortinet NAC, but also Fortinet. Yes, it just all comes down to where the patch is deployed, right? The patch is deployed in a Fortinet NAC uh, scenario. That patch is deployed as close to the edge as you can get. It's deployed on the switch port or on the WLAN, whereas mm -hmm. when we're looking at it from a Fortinet perspective, it's deployed at the FortiGate. Um, so depending on where the FortiGate is placed in that scenario is where the patch would be implemented. Well, James and Chris, we're at the end of our time together. Uh, if folks are curious about Fortinac, FortiLinkNAC, or anything else, where should they go? Well, we would highly encourage you to go out to our website, uh, www.fortinet.com slash LANEDGE, and that will give you uh, a wealth of information about this feature as well as the overall solution from Fortinet. All right, that's fortinet.com slash LAN edge. We'll have that link in the show notes. Also, um, for folks who may not be familiar with uh, Fortinet's switch and AP portfolio, we also did a Tech Bytes on that. So we'll drop that link in the show notes as well if you want to go get uh, all this information. But uh, in the meantime, thank you, Chris and James, for joining us. And thank you to Fortinet for being a longtime sponsor. Sponsors do make everything we do here at Packet Pushers possible. Uh, speaking of everything we do, you can find this and many more fine, free technical podcasts and our community blog. It's all at packetpushers.net. Uh, you can hear us on Spotify. And if you would, leave us a rating on Apple Podcasts. And last but not least, remember that too much networking would never be enough.